Well, hello, everyone. Welcome to today's podcast, The Engineer Whisperer. Today, we're going to talk transitions into a director role. And today, my guest is Kaz. Kaz, welcome to the podcast. Thank you, Andrea. It's a pleasure to be here. Yes, I'm super excited. I'm super excited to have you here. Another person from around here, the Puget Sound, um, local, if I can say, even though you're down south. But um, just super cool to to just see outside of your window too and, and see the Northwest beauty. So tell us a little bit about you as we start. Okay, I'll try to keep it short. I can be very long-winded on that. But uh, so first of all, I'll probably explain my name. So my name is actually uh, Kazuo. Uh, so those who know me for a long time call me Kazo. But it, it's, I go by Kaz. So Kaz works easy for people. They stare at my name otherwise. Um, uh, so it's actually Japanese. And if you can tell, I'm not, I don't look quite Japanese. I'm actually half Japanese. I'm half Japanese. And the other half, my mother, is Dutch. And I remember I'm, I'm listening to uh, some of your other podcasts that you had. You had a Dutch uh, speaker on here before. And you also had another uh, gentleman that was talking about doing business in Japan and in Holland and how, and he, and how polar it was. So it is very polar. Uh, those of you who know Dutch people, um, Dutch can be very direct. Uh, some people can be offended by them because they are so direct because they think they're being mean. But I found, again, being Dutch and such is now we're just, that's just the way they are. They just will tell you what they're thinking and there's not a malice behind it. It's just, just the way that they are. Um, the Japanese side though, being my father's Japanese, it was very, we'll call it, you know, respectful and uh, and had different protocols so that there was like the one thing I totally remember from my father was never to put somebody into a corner, to always leave them in out, um, you know, to you know, hum, being humble and just, just a whole different side. So effectively, my mother and my father were 180 degrees apart. And, and it, was a, it was a blessing. It, growing up in that household was maybe a little bit challenging because they were so different. But in life and in my career, Taking that those two skills of being direct and and be able to get things done and point, point, pointing in as an engineer and also the empathy and uh, uh, to understand people's like what they might be resistant of. because the challenge of being Dutch maybe and being an engineer is that I can meet somebody and completely tell them why they're wrong and have all the facts behind it and put them into a box which gives them no escape and now that person hates me for life. So, so the Japanese side always allowed me to kind of balance that a little bit and I can have a better understanding and a better read of, I think my EQ definitely increased because of that. So, mm. so that's the background of me on that part. Professionally, I started uh, with an industrial technology degree at Cal State Long Beach, uh, proceeded to go through that and communications and such. Um, I was involved in repairing microcomputers and calculators and such as that since I was 15 years old. I actually got hired by a Japanese guy uh, to uh, to help them I, I, as an apprentice, effectively. So I got to be very detailed in the trades of, of understanding digital and analog circuitry since I was 15 and then all the way through college. Um, uh, went from there uh, over to United Parcel Service, which is world renowned as having an amazing industrial. I'm, I'm, I'm an industrial engineer, by the way. So uh, that going with UPS as being phenomenal industrial engineering company. Uh, to be able to help work with develop with that. Um, I got involved in animation for a little while. There was actually an animation system that that was based out of Holland and Japan, which I thought was a natural for me. So I, I kind of acted as their logistics manager, coordinating the the animation processes from Amsterdam to Burbank to Japan, back to Burbank, back to Amsterdam. That oh, was a lot cool. of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, then uh, I, and then after I was involved at United Parcel Service for 10 years, I got involved with the Institute of Industrial and Systems Engineering, which is the professional organization that represents industrial engineers. Uh, and through them, I grew with that and got to learn different skills and different people. And I got hired by Disney. Disney actually knocked on my door and wanted to, to recruit me. Um, uh, I actually told Disney no seven times. <laughs> but people go, what? But uh, I finally wind up taking it. Um, uh, I wound up taking it because my son at the time was, was six years old. And uh, he, uh, he, we didn't know it, but he has ADD. And uh, if you know any kids with the ADD, they're very social, a lot of fun. 
uh, but uh, it's, it's sometimes a little hard for him to focus. And baseball, he hated because it was just too much focus, but he loved hockey. So he started picking up hockey at six years old. Wow. And the challenge with hockey in California at six years old is that you're playing at two o'clock in the afternoon. And unfortunately, United Postal Service, it was really hard for me to get out of work to go to a hockey game. Uh, so when Disney kept knocking on my door, I asked them, would they allow me to go to my son's hockey games at, uh, at two in the afternoon? And my my director uh, at Disney actually, absolutely. You know, we're a 724 company and we, in, we empower you to to take care of your family. Love so that. I did that. Love yeah. That. yeah. With Disney for 22 and a half years, uh, led the industrial engineering department at Disney in the, we'll call it the back, the back of house uh, area where I, uh, was involved with maintenance, security, the hotels, supply chain, laundry. Um, that's the whole gambit of things, but mainly around the, the maintenance uh, and organization, which is you know keeping everything sparkling so that when you come as a guest, that everything's working. Oh, that's um, very important. Let me just say that is very important. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I, uh, I retired from Disney um, and uh, I also teach at USC. I was teaching at United University of Southern California in the master's program for engineering management. Uh, and and I met some great people, some awesome instructors and awesome students that have grown up, which is so cool. And uh, through that, uh, when I retired from Disney, I was helping one of my buddies who was a professor and his TA actually, um, actually created a company, started a company in 3D printing. And, uh, and the company was growing like crazy. They asked me to come in to help them operationally. I, yeah, they had a reputation of being very strong operationally, um, got involved. So they offered me a position as a director for their company. Uh, the, there were 45 employees. I was like number 45 when I when I joined them. Basically taking accountability of the, the, uh, the office, the supply chain, uh, customer service, repair um, in the warehousing system. So that was that was kind of cool. And within three years, though, the company actually grew dramatically to over 300 people. So it was an explosive growth, and that was just the United States. Um, it, it was an awesome experience. Uh, at, but after the third year, I go, you know, I'm working a little too hard for being retired. So I offered to, to actually step down uh, and, uh, and kind of be more retired. I created my own little consulting company called Cause and Effect, a little spin on my name. Um, and I also wind up through through my retirement and such as that, I got reached out to uh, by uh, one of my old one of my old students actually, who um, who had actually uh, uh, developed his own career within uh, a company in Singapore, um, and is a multinational company that uh, works in microchips. And they uh, he suggested that I apply for a role as an independent director for the corporation, which is a little bit different in that. Uh, from a director role that you're normally used to, the people you're interviewing, whether working for a company, an independent director is actually represents the minority shareholders within the company. So the CEO is actually reports to me and my uh, my fellow independent directors, and and I report to the shareholders. And because of that relationship, we're actually regulated it, and I had to go through training with the uh, Singapore um, uh, basically stock exchange to make sure that the things that we're doing and that we're holding ourselves accountable to comply to different rules and regulation along with along with the ability to, to influence and better the company and represent the shareholders. So that, and I've been married 40 years and uh, on May 19th will be our 40th wedding anniversary. I have two kids. Well, congrats so. on that. I, I think that that's Thank success you. by itself. I celebrated 20, so, you know, 20 more. That just sounds amazing. Um, but yes, so I wanted to invite you here because you have a different understanding, experience uh, about a director role. So this independent directorship, uh, tell us more about it. Well, maybe start with uh, what came easy to you in, in that transition or in accepting it or in that process? From, well, the, from the director role at Sprint Ray was, was a natural because it was really an operational focus where my role was to lead and influence the decisions from the C-suite of what Sprint Ray should be thinking about and preparing to doing as we continue through the, through the growth. So um, I don't need to be an expert at anything. At this point, I, now the only expertise I need to be in is understanding people and helping uh, my team 
my leaders, my managers and senior managers and such continue to grow and understand the bigger vision. Because as I can, one of the challenges I think that engineers, especially with those in a technical role, is that, that as an engineer, we get rewarded for what we do as an individual. That if I'm working for you, Andrea, and you give me a role of, hey, can, I need you to solve this, this uh, reliability problem, and I get all excited and I dive into it and do all the analysis and such, and I present it, and, and I get recognized for solving the problem. So that, and, and that's a challenge because we get taught in school, we get taught in our job to be the, the pretty much so the independent person. Yes, we may be working in a team, but fundamentally we're mostly recognized with the world that we did and our promotions, our peers promotions happens from the roles that, that we did as an individual. Yes. And what I found is that that the leaders then, you know, if, you, if you, like Andrea, you continue to do well, you get promoted, but you were never taught on how to motivate and inspire engineers. Because so again, you're, you're trained that, hey, okay, now I'm a leader, that's, that's awesome. So now I'm gonna continue to problem solve that. And, and you're trying to tell your team of what they should be doing. Exactly, and how you're they trying to problem it. solve them and yeah. their work and yeah. yes, the same yeah. habits, and, right? Yeah, and you're and, and effectively, you're, be, you're hearing that you're micromanaging them. And it hurts your feelings because you don't, you're not an evil person. You're, yes. you, you see your micromanager, you cringe on that thing. Yes. But, but again, you're, you're trying to help them. And when you, by helping them, that balance of helping them and making them doing it, taking out the famous red pen to make corrections so there can be better, yes. it, it can deflate them. Yes. And that's what I, that's one of the interesting things that I found in my career is like the, that balance of valuing the individual person and making them feel needed and wanted. Um, and respecting them and, and holding back and just guiding them, uh, like asking questions and such as that. So that was my role working with, with uh, at the directorship there. Spring forward into after retiring from um, Sprint Ray and then going into the independent directorship, that was a different spin on it. It, it wasn't difficult in a way because our, our engineering brain kind of dikes it and puts it all back in sync again. But what, it, what is different about it is that that our role is to represent the minority shareholders and to help the company be better. So in effect, again, the CEO reports to us. So we're their boss and our stockholders, we report to them. So they're our boss. So the, the spin that we take on it is is helping to make the company better so that the, so that the stock can continue to grow and sustain itself and understanding um, the sustainability side, environmental side, the diversity side, the economic side, production side, all the different pieces that go involved. So, but again, we're not experts in it. Our job mm -hmm. is to, to, this, to, to basically kind of almost be like an auditing team to guide them, ask the questions, poke holes as such so that, they, so that they can, the company itself can continue to grow and be better at what they're doing. So what you're saying is ask questions, poke holes, be an auditor, uh, of a CEO and the C-suite. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So tell me about that because one would think that is one of the most challenging roles because we have this perception that the someone at that level or a team at that level uh, are hmm, not as receptive to someone <laughs> coming and auditing them and asking them questions <laughs> because they got there because they were mm -hmm. experts and they know what they do and they have the skills and so forth. So how did you do that? How did you challenge CEOs? I mean, it's, it's actually, it's, I go back to understanding their motivation. So it is, you got to believe that I think most CEOs and, and CFOs and, you know, and uh, COOs, all the C-suite, they want to do well and they want to succeed and pro provide a product and a service that the customers want and are willing to pay for. So in, in there, there's profitability and things like that. So, but as, because there, but there, as, 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 as engineers that we can be, we get immersed into it and we wind up putting, even though we want to be very horizontal, we wind up being vertical on it. So, so the role of the independent director is again, that, that 
they can't fire us. We are voted in by an independent director is voted in by the, by the stockholders. So, so we're their boss. So the power that we have is that we can actually, and you hear this in, in different um, uh, companies, public companies, when they go through uh, turmoils and such as that, that the board can actually oust the, yes. the CEO. Mm -hmm. so, so that's where the, we call it the teeth of this. So the power of this is, is that the board feels that, that the current uh, executive team is challenged so much that it's actually hurting the, the performance of the stock, then, then they can actually vote the CEOs or the, or the, or the C-suite out. So that's where the teeth part come into it. Now, of course, the the independent directors and the whole board, have, there's a whole diligence process of of making of you know doing with an integrity and following different rules and regulations and such. Um, the group that I'm with the the um, uh, is actually regulated and registered with the Singapore Stock Exchange, so that when I took this role, the first thing I had to do is actually take a a ten course. Uh, uh, um, a portfolio of different rules and regulations that are impacted by the directly by the Singapore Stock Exchange, which is probably very, I trans, it is, I'm sure it's very similar in all stock exchanges. It, none of it was surprising. It was just a little more focus on different pieces of it. I see. So was the focus really what um, is the focus of the role in, in your view to, to guide and influence? Because I can't, no, from where I'm sitting right now, with my best intention is, is thinking that the best thing that you can do is not to let the CEO make you no know, bad decisions that will then ruin the company and then have a company close and then lots of jobs lost and suppliers and customers and so forth. So guide them and such. And then I think yes. the, the the reason why I got invited to it which is interesting too. Like, why do they, because it really surprised me. He goes, what? You want me to do what? He goes, well, I think you should apply. And and I said, well, well I'm very humbled because it sounds very grandiose of like, wow, you want to actually be on the board of directors for the for, for a, a, a publicly traded company on an exchange. And the simple response back from the board was that, that we're looking for somebody, we want to be more diverse. And and uh, our independent directors are traditionally uh, accountants or attorneys. And then one of the things that they thought they were lacking was the operational side. So the operational directors or roles within the, within the C-suite were part of the company. Um, so they're going, you know what? We, we believe that we probably could benefit from bringing in somebody external, like an independent director who has an operational focus to be able to poke holes at things. And even though I'm not an expert at all in, in micro in, uh, uh, chip fabrication, is that's what they fundamentally do, they support the chip fabrication industry. I come from Disney, you know, <laughs> that, that, that they valued my, the, the, I'll call it the, the, the default brain pattern that industrial engineers have. I just wanted to of, say, yes, your engineering yeah. mindset. Yeah. Yeah, to look at things differently. And uh, my first trip to Singapore, and I went to visit some, a couple of the plants, I was asking questions, taking lots of notes, and at the end, I would do a debrief and asking questions. So can you explain why that machine is over here and the other machine is way over there? And they looked at me kind of like, well, what do you mean? And I go, well, I'm watching, You know, again, I'm spending half an hour on part of the floor. I'm watching the uh, machinist work on the product and this machine and they take that product Excellent. and they go all the way to the other side of the floor to that machine and they're going well and like go, what if we put the two machines next to each other i mean is there other machines that need that machine like well no they they're and this is where they do it because, yeah it's just well, been just, there for a long time so. yeah they're saying and they, and they go and they go oh my gosh we never even thought about that you know and then and even like this the, the travel time is is minuscule it was the the, the damage things that would happen, like and then the misplacement mm -hmm. of things, of moving it because of self-precision and stuff, that the less movement, then it, it, any movement can create an opportunity for, for damage oh, or such. So you reduce the risk by reducing uh, the movement, uh huh? Yeah, or the just little things like that. And it's just normal to me and find out that, wow, I saved them tons, 
it was amazing when they, they, they uh, the next report out, they were saying, oh, by the way, your suggestions probably saved us a quarter million dollars and different things that we just didn't even see even going on before. So that was I mean, kind of fun. Oh, I I relate. I had a similar experience where I was invited to give a to give a workshop and then they took me to walk the factory floor. And uh, yeah, I just, I, on my end, I noticed the human aspect. I, I noticed people's cubicles and what they had on and what they have uh, around there, there where they were sitting. And, and then I came back and well, I asked some, a few questions like you on the floor of the people and, uh, quickly discovered the culture and how people work and you know the hierarchy within the culture and and uh, and, and when I went back and and uh, talked to the to the leader and I shared it was kind of an eye-opening experience for them so I, I relate I relate uh, having someone an independent third party I call myself coming and coming in and just kind of see things from a different perspective like how i how people think differently live like differently mm -hmm. see things from a different perspective there's value in that okay so hard sometimes right because we we gravitate to people that think like us well that's that, our natural instinct and then yes, when you deliberately yes. go and you go you know what we need to bring somebody different in and uh, uh, and it can be resisted by culture and and go, oh i really like andrea but I hate that three-letter word, but, uh, you know, they said, no, we, we want somebody who's like Andrea, who hasn't been part of here, and, and allow them to speak and understand and challenge us and poke holes at things that we're doing. Yeah. I don't need, we would, we really like Andrea, but, well, what's, what's but mean? Well, but Andrea may not have been part of the microchip industry before, or Andrea may not have, oh, yeah. you know, blah, 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 blah. And they're going, so, so? <laughs> That could be a good thing. It's again perspective. So for you, cause what was a mindset shift that you had to do in order to to even walk in in that situation, to walk into that factory, to 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 walk into that role, to to accept it, and then to say, okay, um, I'm gonna commit to this. One of the biggest mind shift was. Uh, being the the Japanese and me, um, the hum, the being the humble side, because to me, like, this is like a uh, you don't you don't hear very many people. I like them in my spear friends. I can't think of very many at all that are in like say that that uh, board of trustees type of level or board of directors type of level at a stock at a public stockholders type of role. So you know, so I'm humbled by this taking that responsibility. And and my my mindset was well, well what like where do I position myself? I mean, what do I say? You know, what can I say? Things like that. And but the default that I have for myself is I've learned through again a lot of it through the volunteer organization through IISC. I learned it is that my time is valuable and people want to hear from me. Um, uh, so that okay, you know, and so. I got to have faith that they actually are looking to hear from me, even though, you know, I might have uh, years of maybe repression and things like that of wanting to say something at that time. So mm -hmm. I get to know them and understand because now I'm going to take and I'm going to go with I'm going to go with it that that uh, again, they I believe that they that if I say something incorrectly that might offend them, that the motivation behind it is to make it better. So, oh, no. so my, my fear factor is again, I'm going to say something that offends them. Again, the Dutch in me wouldn't have cared. <laughs> they would have gone right at it. But the Japanese in me would like kind of reserve back from going, okay, but, but the motivation behind it is, you know, is going to be okay. So if I sense through body language such that, that I'm pushing it too far, then I can back off and I can, uh, you know, I'll apologize or maybe I'll even open up. Again, trying opening up, said, "Okay, forgive me for um, uh, making you know some some observation and comments. Uh, these are things because I don't know your you know that particular industry or that particular process that well. But you know, I'm using my we'll call it my IE engineering common sense. I just want to ask a couple of questions. Yes, and and that's what. So again, having faith in that uh, uh, in myself and in my mindset to be able to do that because it's interesting because I will coach." my teams and those I've been coaching and mentoring for years always have faith and confidence in themselves to be heard. 
and to and, and, and again doing it with respect and if you do step on somebody a little bit how to you know how to kind of recover from that and and sometimes you might fall you might have gone too far on it but you know but, but most of the time i, I said 90 percent of the time right if we step on somebody's toes because our motivation was to help them they forgive us yeah and it's okay but you have to say something right it's yes. not, you have to come back you have to have that intention that i want to apologize forgive yeah. me like, i want to do something about it not just oh it already happened because you know what i'm hearing i'm hearing this really important topic that i i want to highlight here is the 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 valuing yourself that the self-value and that do you believe that you bring value to the table that that a lot of engineers that I work with struggle with. I mean, what you said, somebody invited you to be on that board, to be an in the, to become an independent director. Um, so they already had a value proposition in their mind of what value you can bring. And it's amazing, and I'm so happy to hear that you you have then your own value proposition of who you are and what value you can bring and you trusted that that you you believed in that and I think that's part of that confidence that you're talking about of being rooted in in yeah being confident in that and maybe that's over the years your experience I believe everybody can bring some value everybody can bring unique value we just have to figure it out and in a way be able to to speak it into the world, tell it to others, not with the intention to sell ourselves and I don't know boost our skills and talent, but more from what you're talking about that that humbleness, that honoring yourself, your effort, what you put into your life, your growth, uh, is really what your where your value shines. That resonate it does it totally does and it um and again as a leader you i found that it probably your experience also is that when you have people your subordinates that you're serving and i always i'm a servant type of leader so i feel i always serve them is that when they see that then it, in, it inspires them and to give mm -hmm. them confidence to do it yeah. and it's like we we if we had a leader and we all had good bosses and bad bosses in our careers and I tend, I, one of the things I always would coach people on is that you learn from your good bosses because you want to repeat what they did. And you learn from your bad bosses and you want to remember what they did. And don't think you're not going to do a bad boss thing. You will do a bad boss thing. But the, the difference, I hope, is that you understand that you're doing something the bad boss did and you can correct it. Mm. While the, the bad bosses will do it over and over and over again because either they don't understand it or it's a power yeah. trip for them yeah. of yelling and screaming or the red pen yeah. you know simple things like the red pen uh i don't think mean, many engineers especially that i know when they see a deck and the or a worksheet and there's red ink on it, it internally it just crushes them you know there's the years of repression and stuff that are being pushed back and brought back to light and you and they it deflates them and breaks their confidence down. So the simple thing I would do, like I never use a red pen at Disney. I, I had a a big click. I don't I have it over on the other side of my desk. With I remember the big click made in yes. France. It has black and blue and red and green, and green. Yeah. I mm -hmm. I love that pen and actually it became a staple of uh, both at Sprint Ray and at uh, and Disney is that when in, when other engineers saw one of my team they they or they would they would identify members of my team because they had the big clan they know the four color pen and they remember that I remember that when I was in junior high and, and they go you part of the industrial engineering group or you part of Kaza's team and they go oh, well, yeah. so not just you had it but your team had it too oh, I wind up buying I had my my admin oh. buy me like a case of the darn things because oh, and, and they did the first project I would give them a pen I but I would it. never use the red for corrections yeah you know you'd use green or blue or something yes. like that I wouldn't use I wouldn't use oh. the red the That's so cool. Like that. Look at all those <laughs> options. Yeah, I mean, with one tool, you have so many options. Right. You know, I I can stand up and bring one. Yes, my husband loves those, and he has one right now. So, 
I and I had one too. I wasn't as attached, but I I understand. What an interesting again, it's it's that concept, it's the mindset behind it, the what it represents, how to use it. It's a simple tool, but yeah. Holy moly. Yes. And I haven't thought about it that, yeah, others will recognize you as part of Kaz's team and what you represent. So it's, it's this whole, you know, branding, mission, vision, so forth, strategy, what you stand for, teamwork. Oh, that is so cool. Thanks for sharing. Um, send you, I'll send you a, a big click pen. Next time when we have a cup of coffee on the ferry going between Bainbridge and Mackenzie, we'll we'll uh, we'll put the, the 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 big click pen and scribble <laughs> on different notes. I love it. I love it. That actually sounds amazing. Uh, well, as we're getting close to to our end, uh, I want to ask you what transition are you going through right now, if anything. Um. So it's interesting. It's it's probably not typical uh, because effectively I retired twice. Uh, my 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 friends from Boeing laugh at me because uh, my first retirement lasted three days. <laughs> so when I retired from Sprint Ray, I created Cause and Effect with my little the consulting company, which I do kind of like you. I also I spend time coaching engineering leaders on how to be better uh, and and understand different different gaps that they had. And I also have been known especially for a lot of the core engine, industrial engineering skills. Um, and then the independent directorship role. But the, the, the probably the, the, the big change per se is that for years, um, uh, again, I said my wife and I've been married for 40 years, is that my wife has been this amazing blessing in serving me as the husband you know, um, and raising our kids and such as that. She was a stockbroker and she and she wound up actually um, leaving the stockbroking industry to be a full-time mom. And and so when we went to industrial engineering conferences, example, industrial engineering conferences always happen on our, our wedding anniversary. So, and she would be very nice. She would go and we'd make a little trip out of it, like, you know, go to Montreal or whatever. And like this year it's in Montreal and it's our 40th anniversary. And my wife goes, you know what? I, you know, I rather not go and hang around a bunch of engineers. I said, let's go to um, Victoria Island, and and I'd love to stay at the 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 Fremont. So those of you who don't know, if you look up Victoria Island and you see the super fancy hotel, that's the Fremont. And 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 so again, my my change is that in the past I might have dwelled on like, well, you're trying to justify Montreal. He goes, no. My wife has served me, been with me on my side and supported me for all these years. Now I'm retired, it's her turn. So if she wants to go to Montreal, then that's where we're going to go. So I guess this automatically kind of defaulting back to to understanding her and her needs now that I'm retired, I should be giving back time. I actually, um, it set home on me. One of the times I spoke, being at Disney, it's, it's a blessing and that everybody wants to hear from you. And the University of Oklahoma invited me to speak uh, at their program. And the, the, the basically the department head was a retired general. And and um, he always invites you know special people. I got invited by him. And part of the invite, he has us over for dinner at his house. And he unfortunately, he couldn't have dinner at his, invite me over for dinner because his wife became ill. And when he called me, he goes, you know, I really apologize. I really wanted my wife and I wanted to have you over for dinner, but my wife is ill and all the years that I served in Vietnam and such as that, he goes, she was always there and now it's her turn. So there's, if anything that she needs and I, she automatically gets top priority. And I kind of took that to heart and it's stuck in the back of my mind as something, again, somebody who's that important in the, my, my life partner uh, to kind of pivot, which is again, Maybe not like you know, traditional engineering response that you might get at what what motivates and guides me on things, but but that's that's what has uh, has been uh, my pivot point now. Well, thanks for sharing, as as a wife, as a spouse of of someone for as I mentioned, over twenty years. Um, it's it's awesome to give. It's awesome to receive, and to have a bond with someone that. Mm, that spans over up and downs, up and downs of my life. It's definitely a privilege. So being married to an engineer isn't easy. I am... The hardest part is we're always right and we just have to convince everybody else. <laughs> I just 
just appreciate being in a partnership and that's what it sounds like with you and her and you know again thanks for sharing and what a fascinating transition to to take on and to uh to go through you know the emotional side because really you're changing your habits you're saying no to the friends i don't know former customers or uh former co-workers that you might have seen at the conference um so you know it comes with some feeling i bet of loss uh there but then what a gain on on the personal side so thank you for sharing well i would like to give the mic back to you to close us out what would you like to leave us with today cause well things so one is to be kind I mean, it's interesting that it's a silly thing that people go, what? But um, especially in, in the world that we live in today, is that the, the ability to be kind, to understand what motivates people so that even though you might be angry or frustrated with them, if you take a time, a step back and go, so what's motivating that? It can be, it could really resolve a lot of different issues mm -hmm. of, of like, and, and, and create and open opportunities. Um uh, it's, it's, again, it's just something silly, but I've learned just to be kind. The other one, again, and maybe a little spirit of being kind is to, is to remember those who had an influence on you. Um, one of the things that I've done for a long, long time is that when I used to drive to Los Angeles from, from, uh, Orange County, Los Angeles, it's an hour drive each way, sometimes longer in LA traffic. But instead of turning on the radio or listening to a podcast or such, um, I will usually listen to podcasts, but I would actually default to calling somebody oh. and, and people, and, and I would call people out of the blue, like, you know, past professors, um, uh, past employees, people who have left, you know, who left or gone on other friends. Um, I don't, uh, it's interesting because I hear mentoring a lot for different people. And, uh, one of my, my buddies from Boeing actually coached me on the term mentoring because I mentioned, oh, I'm going to be, I'm mentoring, blah, blah, blah. And he looked at me and he goes, you're not mentoring them. I, go, I kind of felt offended. I'm going, what do you mean? Because you're coaching them. I go, well, what, what, what's the difference? And he, and he goes, a mentor, if you're mentoring somebody, there's an emotional investment. And, 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 he, and he goes, let me, and he asked me a simple question. Does your mentor know what scares you? And I'm going, what? And do you know what scares them? And I, go, I, and I kind of had to think about it. He goes, well, I don't think so he goes just it's not a mentoring it's you're coaching them which is fine because don't knock it because you can coach lots of people but to be a real mentor you can't do that it's too emotionally challenging maybe, maybe three or so and take those those two or three or four people that you know that that are that literally you are able to talk about what fears you, they have and what fears you have that's a lifelong thing. This is something that's going to be with you forever. And, 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 and we, it is a very different experience. And it's a, it can be extremely rewarding because, like I said, you're the person to be able to contact them and, and such as that. And you're watching and you're celebrating their life's achievement yes. as opposed to, yeah, it's really nice that they did well. He goes, no, this is you know, when, when, when Robin you know, got her promotion, he goes, oh my gosh, that was so awesome. When, when Christy, wind up getting two Chick-fil-A's because uh, it goes like, are you kidding me? Chick Christie, nobody gets one Chick-fil-A. You got two Chick-fil-A's. It goes like, I, I got all these different little things that, uh, uh, that, that, that actually means something. So, but, and it kind of, it's last time it starts with this, a phone call. Like if they, if, uh, if your listeners, if they're driving, um, take an opportunity to call somebody, you know, look at your, 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 your uh, cell phone and, and goes, I haven't talked to this person in yeah. a long time. Yeah. And just hit that button and say, hi, he said, what you doing? You know, hi, I want to hear from you. I haven't heard from you for so long. And, and, and this, it's so rewarding to be able to have that connection back to that, that person again. And it, it long for them. And I think for yourself, I'll be able to reconnect with people because fundamentally, like it's, especially industrial engineering, we're the people engineers and the, the, the strongest skill set that, that many industrials have is the ability to relate with people. So, so don't, don't take that for granted. Yes. So really lean into that kind of own it, know that that's where your value is. That's what you, that's the gift that you can give to others and, and do it by, as you said, just pick up the phone and the first person on there, click, see, see what happens. Huh? Um, 
I've tried it myself too, as you were speaking and surprised many people. Uh, but we had a great conversation. So I I attest it's it's uh it's great to give and it's great to be on the receiving end as well. Well, on that note, Kaz, thank you very much for being here. I so appreciate your time and everything you shared. Um, this was a great conversation. Thank you.